Okay, welcome to my shed. This is where we're going to start the uh, Zenith CH750 build. Uh, you can see here I've got my um, currently owned the Jabber root and decided to build myself a Zenith, Zenith CH750 in my shed here. Set that set up the shed. Um, we'll have a walk around and talk about it. Um, just in the early stages of ordering the kit. Uh, I've got about a three month wait now, I think, until the kit arrives, but we're going to build it in here. So I'll show you around the shed. Like I said, currently own the Jabaroo, and now I've decided, after visiting the factory in Missouri, Mexico, Missouri, I went and saw the guys. Uh, Roger took me for a fly and spoke to Steve. Also went to the uh, Midwest LSA Expo in Mount Vernon which is fantastic, so all enthusiastic to start building an aircraft in my hangar. So what I've got is a double garage, um, all set up, decked out with the tools. I've just built a nice big table, big workbench, after talking to Steve at Zenith. So this table is uh, standard sheets in Australia, like 2400 by 1200 and that I've cut the ends off cut the ends off this so now it gives me it's 14 foot long by 4 foot wide in the old scale if you like I've also left the uh, I think it's I've left a nice overhang along the edge here so that I can you know, simply clamp stuff on all the way around down underneath just put some shelving Slowly filling up with uh, household stuff at the moment. A couple of shelves either end, big shelf in the middle. Uh, I'm anticipating the engine cowl, etc., to go in there. Under here, put a little shelf in for my Clecos and Scotch Bright. I've got a bit of primer and thinners, a lot of squirty bottles. And if, uh, My fleet goes. I've got about 500 of each. See how that goes. 332nd, 1 8th, and 532nd. They're all there ready to go. Like I said, I went to Bunnings, which is the equivalent of Lowe's or Home Depot, I think. Got a couple of cheap kitchen cabinets. Put those in down one side of the shed. I have an aero modeler from way back. So there's a few model aeroplanes. I think most of these videos I've seen. People have a model aeroplane hanging up there every now and then. And I've got a few, a bit of my wall of my How Good Am I up the top there. Trophies from my aero modelling days. And it's a uh, flying carpet over there, believe it or not, but it does actually fly. So to build the zenith, I'm going to need to put some more shed, more lighting in the sheds. Make it a bit brighter in here. Space is a bit of a at a premium at the moment. Over on this bench, got a vice scroll saw. <clears throat> I bought the Ozito brand of uh, angle or bench grinder. I can just drag each one of these forward. So I've got the vertical drill and the bandsaw, just to save a bit of space and a bit of workbench area. I'll drag these forward, clamp, clamp them as I need them, and use them. Got the Scotch Bright disc off Amazon. It'll polish up the aluminium really well. I've done a few test pieces, which is great. And obviously the sanding belt on this side. The Ozito brand's pretty cheap. That was only $69 for the whole setup with the arm. Um, but it comes with a 12 month warranty. So we'll see how we go. Just some balsa wood on the shelves there. More storage shelves I've put in for aircraft parts when they do arrive. Down underneath the benches is also um, spare for storage. These are boards, cork boards just from building model aeroplanes. On my tool board, which I've had a good selection of tools most of the time, but I've started getting more specialist aircraft tools, if you like. I do own a Jabiru, like I said, so I've got a set of tools out at the aircraft at the moment, so I am doubling up a bit. I've got my straight edges, a nice big long uh, one meter sanding block, which comes in very, very handy. The trick with that, you just get a uh, like a belt sander, a um, bit of sandpaper, cut it in 
or cut it so you can then adhere it to the aluminium or aluminium for the Americans. My deburring tools, all this, most of this stuff came from aircraft spruce, hole finders, and my edge, that's my edge uh, cleaning up sort of deburrer that will run, run, along, run along the edge of the aluminium, clean the edges up nicely. Set of metric and imperial sockets with the ratchet, the lock wire pliers, got myself a magnet, left and right hand tin snips, Clico pliers. Also with the Clicos, I've got some of these, um, what are they, like skin, skin clamps, just to hold two pieces of aluminium together. Spanners, set of files, these are all the recommended Zenith tools, and if I need to use those I'm in, in a world of hurt I think. Um, shifter, Boy, got the hand riveter as well, which comes with the Zenith. Uh, tips for their for their rivets. They're actually a countersunk rivet, which turns into a dome rivet. Also, got my air gun. Sorry, my air rivet gun, which will all I've fixed that up, ready to go into my compressor, and that also comes, which is great, with the Zenith um, rivet head tips. <coughs> Pitch gauge for the pitch of, of pitch of the rivets. Space that out. So it takes out all the guesswork. Uh, and just some I've got there Dremel heat iron and some soldering wires. Uh, previous RAAF or Air Force guy, so some memorabilia there. Fishing rods when I get a chance. Typical screwdrivers, more files. These ones here, these are uh, all the permagrit stuff, if you haven't got any permagrit stuff, I suggest you, you know, get hold of some if you can. They're a bit a bit pricey, but well worth it. Uh, come in all shapes and sizes, very good for the job. These are, they're like crimping pliers, but not for, not for electrical wires. They actually crimp the aluminium to, you know, curve it or straighten it up, etc. So they'll come in handy as well. Fairly simple set of pliers. Uh, tape measures and all your general sort of tools. And from my aero modeling days, if you want to talk aerobatics, got my model planes there. Um, I plan to use, I've got a compressor here, but I've also got my DeWalt uh, impact driver and the just the battery drill. I'll probably just go with the battery drill, I guess. Um, I've also ordered over here against the window. Um, started with my 1 8th, 5 32nd. 332nd drill bits and some left over, or some extra little double ended ones just to keep a nice sharp drill bit at all times and I also got some uh, 12 inch 1 8 and 332nd drill bits there ready to go as well. Back around over here, lashed out, bought myself a hundred dollar retractable airline and I'll put a picture up but I got my old compressor uh, just a two horsepower compressor, built a box, 9mm MDF, just painted it up, put a few stickers on it. But now when I uh, turn the compressor on, I think it's a lot, a lot quieter and uh, it doesn't make me jump when it k kicks in and it should keep, should keep the neighbours happy. So that sits in there and my wife noticed that straight away and thought I'd spent quite a bit of money. But I had to convince her that I just made up the box and put some nice stickers on there. Also got my aircraft registration in Australia, 19 designates home built um, or experimental, uh, 1656. So my call sign potentially for the cruiser will be something like cruiser 1656, which is pretty cool. And that's the shed, just uh, super glue, etc. down the side there. So hopefully I've got enough space. I have designed this bench here. If I move my Clicos, um, that bench there, just another space saving idea. It actually, I've built a lot of model aircraft on this bench, but it will also slide straight across the top of that bench. Give me some more space to work with. 
uh, may end up outside that bench. I find the um, nice smooth surface is handy. It's built plenty of model airplanes, like I said. Swarf may be an issue. I've carpeted the floor, but I've got a vacuum over there. Um, and I'll obviously I like it nice and clean and tidy. So that is the shed all set up for the Zenith build. Hopefully it all goes to plan. And just waiting now for the actual aircraft kit to arrive. And we'll start to make an aeroplane. Thanks for watching.